Hi everybody, it's Professor Michelson. I'm um, using this video to go over our syllabus for the seminar on gender and crime, uh, our online class. This is an asynchronous class, which means that we won't have a particular time that we come together and meet. Um, there are synchronous classes, which means that everybody has to come together at a particular time online, and asynchronous, which means that we all do this on our own time. That's not to say that you should wait until the very end of the semester to get all your work done, but it does mean that you, sh you should learn um, using the Blackboard, um, all the materials on Blackboard, based on when uh, is best for you. Okay. Now, um, at the top you'll see my contact information. Uh, best way to reach me is to email me, and um, I would love to have you come in and meet with me in my office hours uh, anytime that you, uh, is convenient for you. Um, so uh, if you'd like to do that, send me a quick email and let's make time. Okay. So this course is going to be broken into thirds. Uh, we're going to, the first third, talk about women and men as uh, people who commit crimes. Um, gender is often assumed to just mean women, but in fact all of us have a gender. Um, so, you know, I'd like you to pay attention to the ways in which um, gender overall affects crime, not just for women, uh, but also for men. So, uh, the second third of the course, we're going to be talking about victimization experiences uh, and how gender affects whether or not someone is victimized or how someone is victimized. Um, and then the last third of the class, we're going to be talking about how gender impacts uh, people who are working in the field of criminal justice. Um, so, female police officers, uh, male judges, um, corrections officers, probation officers, all sorts of different people in the, in the field of criminal justice, how gender interacts with their work. And you'll see I have the objectives of the course listed. Your grade is mostly uh, made up of your discussion uh, online. Um, your postings, your postings to the discussion board make up uh, the, the largest percentage of your grade. What I'd like to see in them uh, is really a combination of two things. First of all, I'd like to make sure that I see that you're doing your readings. Um, if I just see, opinions are great. I love opinions. I think opinions bring out ways for us to learn in all sorts of different ways. However, um, opinions need to be, in my opinion as a professor, it needs to be informed by fact. Um, and the reason that you're taking this class is to learn the facts of gender and crime. So don't just post up about your opinions. Um, make sure that you show that you've done the readings. The perfect post, as I've said before, um, will show that you've done the readings, um, will include your opinions about them uh, and about the topic that we're discussing, um, and then also ideally we'll start to facilitate a discussion between you and the other people in the class. Um, everybody will be coming to the readings from different perspectives. Uh, I will be participating in the discussions, and that will help us um, all learn together. Um, reaction paper to a book. Uh, you'll see in the assignment section on Blackboard that you can choose uh, a book. Um, uh, I have a bunch listed. If you find one that you'd like to do, make sure you clear it with me first. Also, we have a set of four worksheets that are also in the assignment section of Blackboard. One on alternatives to incarceration, another on visiting uh, to prisons or jails, a third on gender and policing, and a fourth on media representations of gender and crime. Um, those should be relatively straightforward. The instructions are very clear. You can go in multiple times if you'd like to. Um, they're not tests in that you have to do it in one sitting. Okay. Uh, class participation, as I said, is incredibly important for this class because it's going to be the way that I know that you're doing your readings and learning about the topic. So make sure that you are uh, doing your readings and keeping up with discussion boards. If you feel like you are falling behind, please contact me as soon as you have that first thought. Even if it's just a fleeting thought, talk to me as soon as you can because if it gets to be too late, it's hard to make it up. And online classes take a lot of, of discipline um, because you're not coming to a class and I'm not looking at you going, what's going on? You know, so make sure that you're doing things as they're going along. Obviously, uh, Blackboard is 
um, absolutely integral to this course, so make sure that you're checking your Blackboard all the time. Make sure that you're checking your Montclair email relatively regularly, at least, at least once a week. I'm sending out announcements all the time. Um, so make sure that you're doing that. No, I'm going back to Blackboard. The requirement is that you post at least 30 times over the course of the semester. Unlike my previous online classes, I am not requiring that you post for each and every single class. I find that people found that a little bit too restrictive and it was hard for me to keep up with grading. Um, what I'm doing is now, I'm giving you the leeway to post 30 times to discussion words that you find interesting. Um, um, readings that you sort of inspired you, um, but I don't, I don't want you to think you can't get a good grade if you front load your 30, right? You do 30 in the next first two weeks of the semester, and then you're done. I'm going to be watching to make sure that you have a good range um, of of posts over the course of the semester to make sure that it shows that you're doing the readings. If you have a week where you get a little bit overwhelmed, you don't get a chance to post, you're not going to get penalized for it. Um, but also realize that if you post, you know, five at the beginning of the semester and, oh my god, 25 at the end, your grades are going to reflect that lack of um, sort of uniformity, okay? Now, uh, academic honesty, um, it's really quite easy, I have learned, to cheat and plagiarize in an online class. Um, please don't do it. Um, it's relatively easy also for me to figure out that you've done it. If you have any questions at all about what constitutes uh, plagiarizing or cheating, just talk to me. I'm not going to, you know, go nuts on you. So just have a conversation with me. And again, if you're feeling overwhelmed, let me know. Okay? Uh, let's see. Reading materials. There is not a book for this class. Um, the reading materials are all posted up in the course documents sections. Um, and should anything ever not be available, just send me a quick email and I'll find it again. Sometimes links break or um, files become corrupted and I'll easily fix that for you. A quick note about course content. Um, often people use something called a trigger warning. There's a lot of material in this class that somebody might find disturbing, uh, particularly when we focus on victimization. Um, so if you feel as though there's something that might upset you, either due to your own personal experience or the personal experience of someone that you care about, or for any other reason, just talk to me. I don't want you um, not getting falling behind because something is upsetting to you. There's no reason for that. And, and just have a conversation with me. You don't have to give me any personal information. But just let me know that something is, is affecting you, and we'll, we'll work around it. Okay, so the week's topics and reading schedule, you'll see uh, every week, uh, every Wednesday, uh, it, there's something due. Um, that's my reminder that I have to go teach in 15 minutes. But um, just, you'll notice a couple of things. Uh, for some weeks, I have readings that are due for every student. Um, some weeks, I have readings that are due by last name. I get a little overzealous. I love this class. It makes me very happy to teach this class. So I have lots and lots of readings that I want everybody to know about. Um, but if I gave all of you five huge reports to read every week, nobody would ever take my classes. So I've broken it up by last name. Uh, just check for your last name and do that reading. And um, ideally in the discussion boards, you would um, sort of describe your reading in an analytic way that would allow other people to say, oh, that's cool, my reading was different, um, and it complemented it in this way or that way, or, you know, that you can learn from each other. Uh, let's see what else I wanted to talk about. Um, in Blackboard, this is the one last thing I want to talk about. In Blackboard, you should be focusing most of your attention on the course documents section. Um, I've done a lot of work in creating folders that go by each topic, each weekly topic, and you'll find all sorts of treasures in there. Your discussion boards are in there, uh, your readings are in there, sometimes I put in some supplemental materials like videos or other readings that might interest you. Um, certainly your discussion board posts will be particularly um, I don't know, 
interesting and highly graded, perhaps, if you're using supplemental materials, if you're saying, hey, you know, I read the required reading, but I also looked at this video, and they go together in this cool way, or something like that, or I totally disagree, or wow, that really clarified my thoughts. So, um, focus on the course documents section in each folder. The other place that you should be focusing, obviously syllabus is important, keep up with that as best you can. And then lastly, the assignments section. That's where uh, really good details on each of your um, assignments is in the assignment section. I think that's it. Um, if you have any other questions, notice that there are three discussion boards that can be used over the course of the entire semester. One is where we introduce ourselves, um, use that section to talk about whatever, I don't care. You know, I'd love to, for us to get to know each other even better. Um, there's another one called Open Thread. You might recognize this from your favorite websites. That's just for anything that comes up. If you watched a cool TV show, put it up there. If you have a question about something, put it up there. It's just, it's sort of a catch-all. Uh, if something doesn't fit in another discussion board, put it there, and people will be replying over the course of the semester, and I'll, of course, be reviewing it all the time. And then lastly, there's a syllabus discussion board. If you ever have any questions that are specific about the syllabus and you'd like to put it up there, go ahead. Obviously, you can email me at any time, but, um, you know, those are also some other places if you'd like to use them. Okay? So, have a great day, and uh, again, any questions, any concerns, anything like that, just send me a quick email, and, and we'll, we'll work on it as, as best we can, as quickly as we can. All right? Take care.